Hi everybody, I'm Jordan Rolfus from Beagle Rampant Productions, and today we are going to be taking a look at the St. Boniface Parish in the Northside District of Cincinnati. The parish has a fascinating 150 plus year history, but today we're primarily going to focus on the architecture and symbolism that we find in the church as well as some of the architecture of the school building. The school building was built in the 1930s and we can see that back then the school entrances were segregated according to gender. So the boys had their entrance for the school and the girls had their entrance and of course, the students nowadays don't need to follow any of that. They can use whichever door they feel like they need to, or I guess the principal probably wants them to enter a particular door. Don't really know. Been a while since I've elementary schooled, and I actually did not go to this elementary school either, but we recorded this right around the time for the 6 o'clock Spanish Mass, and... Right here we can see the cafeteria of the school, and after the 6 o'clock Spanish Mass, the youth ministry gets together and performs some worship songs, so it's a very good time. They do a wonderful job with the Spanish Mass, and I love this photo here. This photo was probably taken in the 1940s, I guess, because you can see some of the automobiles there. And back outside, this is the back area of the main altar and kind of by the sacristy there. The church itself was completed in 1927 and you see we have a little connector going to the uh, residence for the priest and there's a garage for you know the priest's Maserati there and now we're walking around to the main entrance and as you can see, we have, uh, going down these steps, this leads you to the food pantry. On Saturdays, the St. Vincent de Paul Society has a food pantry for those in need, and my dad sometimes volunteers there. It's a nice way to spend a Saturday. We have a nice field here and a brand new parking lot. When I was a kid, that was actually an open field, and we had the annual Easter egg hunt. Uh, now we kind of have the Easter egg hunt uh, on the upper level. We have some more grassy area there. We have the parish offices right over here as we're continuing our walk kind of towards the main entrance here. And uh, all sorts of beautiful uh, gardens and grounds at St. Boniface Parish. I absolutely love getting into the right frame of mind for worship by admiring some of this beautiful scenery and Right over here, of course, we still have some more gardens, and this ramp leads into the church, the, into the sanctuary proper, and uh, we're kind of at an interesting point here with this video. It took me a couple of weeks to get all of the footage, but we are going to gradually see the COVID-19 restrictions being lifted. So I think when I recorded this particular footage, we were still very much in the COVID-19 restrictions, but gradually those restrictions were lifted. This garden here, kind of uh, in between the main uh, door of the church and the, the side ramp entrance here, was dedicated to St. John Paul II, who uh, passed away in the early 2000s. And we keep uh, walking forward here towards the main doors of the church. We have some beautiful Corinthian-style columns. You have three major types of ancient Greek columns. You have Doric, which is kind of more basic. You have Ionic, which have the little swirls on the side. And you have Corinthian columns, which are very ornate and elaborate, very much unlike how I record any sort of footage here. And we have the nice sign, St. Boniface Church, and the statue of St. Boniface overlooking as the faithful go in to begin their worship service. And continuing along here, so this is the main sign for St. Boniface Church here that lists all the mass times. I believe the Spanish language listings are on the other side there. And this is a very interesting plaque here. So... St. Boniface, uh, this uh, cornerstone here is from 1925, and uh, the building was officially dedicated in 1927. But ultimately, uh, 
the parish of St. Aloysius back in the 1800s split along ethnic lines. Uh, the Germans uh, got St. Boniface Parish, and the Irish got St. Patrick Parish. And then in the early 1990s, the churches uh, merged. So we have St. Boniface and St. Patrick parishes merged into one community. And now we are so fortunate and so blessed to have merged with the San Carlos Borromeo Parish. Uh, this has been an absolutely fun time having all three of the faith communities coming together. It's been absolutely wonderful. Over there on the left-hand side with the little window there, that is actually the confessional where you, the faithful go to have the sacrament of reconciliation. You confess your sins to the priest, you get it off your chest, you get it out into the open, and you pray for the Lord's forgiveness. And all sins are going to be forgiven except for the sin where you don't ask for forgiveness because logically that doesn't make any sense. It, Jesus explains it better in the Bible than I just did, so I forget which gospel that's in, but Jesus does explain it a lot better than I did. And we have a nice uh, view of uh, the sacristy and the school there. And over here, we have the front of the school, and you gotta love that Corinthian column action. I just can't get enough of the sugar of Corinthian columns. Mmm, it's good stuff there. And I pan around, and I get a shot of a tree. A good portion of this video is also me trying to test out my brand new GoPro. I got a GoPro for my birthday this year, and... I have opinions on the GoPro camera, and uh, sometimes you could maybe chalk it up to me not being that good of a cinematographer, but regardless, I always enjoy uh, showing off St. Boniface here, and see, I'm showing off the church. So let's get ready to head on in and start exploring the inner sanctuary here. Once you go through the main door of the church that had the statue of St. Boniface over it, kind of near the cornerstone. We have the photo of Pope Francis I there, and over on the other side we have a photo of Archbishop of Cincinnati, Dennis Schnur, the Archbishop of this current recording here. On the left there we've got some bulletin boards for information about health and wellness and all sorts of things throughout the community. And we have little display cases showcasing the history of St. Boniface. So. We had the St. Aloysius Parish that grew very large in the middle of the 19th century, so they had to split the parish up along German and Irish lines. The Irish went to St. Patrick, the Germans went to St. Boniface, and ultimately in the 1990s the parish um, re-emerged, and now we are absolutely delighted to have the parish of San Carlos Borromeo join us. So really, we have uh, three parishes uh, coming together here, and a lot of these old photographs of the church, so the church was dedicated in 1927, a lot of that is going to look very different uh, when we actually get in there. A lot of the artwork around the altar is going to look incredibly different from what you saw in that photograph there, or what you kind of saw with that photograph there. And we just have some information about um, the Eucharist and information from the Vatican from the old days and all sorts of wonderful memorabilia and uh, historical remembrances here in the display cases. And St. Boniface still uh, performs the Four Chaplains Mass, commemorating uh, the fallen chaplains of the Second World War. So, history is very much an important part of the communities of St. Boniface, St. Patrick, and San Carlos. So, it's really nice to have past, present, and future coming together in this parish here. So... Once we're done looking at the display cases here, we're going to head into the bride's room. This is mostly used for brides to get ready before a wedding. Right now, they just seem to be storing random stuff in here. We have a very nice crucifix, though, so that's nice. It was originally used as a baptistry, and we have a stained glass window of Jesus being baptized by St. John the Baptist, and... 
a wonderful shot of that crucifix there. And we have Jesus. I believe this is a scene of Jesus teaching the Pharisee Nicodemus. A follower of Jesus, but he had to be a follower of Jesus in secret. And moving out from uh, the baptistry there, we have some information on the COVID guidelines there. And a lot of those are going to be lifted by the end of this video. We have a nice stained glass window of St. Gabriel, who announced to the Virgin Mary that she would bear and become the Mother of God. And over here we have the stained glass window of St. Michael, and when I was little, Dad would always take me to the restroom and we would admire this window, and this is the reason why I picked Michael for my confirmation name, because I just love this stained glass window, which was made by a company in Germany. These stained glass windows are imported from Germany. These steps lead to the choir loft, and you can see the stained glass window has some musical instruments there, so we try to guide you along with the symbolism. That door leads to the restroom. The drinking fountain is closed off because of the COVID restrictions. Yep, we're getting ready for the 6 o'clock Saturday Spanish Mass. I love it. I love seeing the community. And there is, of course, my biggest fan. <sighs> And moving on into the actual sanctuary, we have this wonderful view. Of course, my camera work isn't necessarily what I would call wonderful, but anytime you're in a church, even a lousy cinematographer is going to look pretty good, am I right? So, over here we have, on the right side, we have all sorts of stained glass windows, and we have these really nice swinging lanterns. Well, they're not technically supposed to swing, but I always just imagine them swinging. Here we have a statue of St. John Vianney, the Cure of Ars, and I am sorry for mispronouncing that, but he is a patron of priests. Here we have St. Patrick, who of course is the patron of Ireland. And... This statue was from the original St. Patrick Parish, and here we have some hymnals and things, and the holy water to commemorate the sacrament of baptism is back, so I can go ahead and commemorate my baptism by dousing my hands with holy water and making the sign of the cross. Here we have a statue of St. Charles Borromeo, who was a figure in the Counter-Reformation. So we had the Protestant Reformation, and then San Carlos was sort of the Catholic response to the Reformation. And here, this altar came from the merger with uh, San Carlos Parish. So a very nice altar for venerating and remembering the crucifixion and Christ's sacrifice for our sins. No matter what's going on in your life, Christ will be triumphant. Here we have a nice stained glass window of Jesus teaching the children. Jesus wants everyone to come on to him, so it doesn't matter what society says about you or what is, you think uh, you're worth to Christ. You are worth everything. And here we have my favorite miracle, Jesus resurrecting Jairus' daughter. It's important to come to Christ with your problems. It's important to say, Jesus, I need help. And I say, Jesus, I need help about pretty much everything. If it wasn't for Jesus' help, none of these videos would be anywhere near the internet. And I wouldn't even be doing this good if it wasn't for Jesus' help. I'm only here by the grace of Christ. And as I mentioned in my cathedral uh, tour, every church has a commemoration of the Stations of the Cross, Jesus' journey up to Golgotha for the crucifixion. And uh, the cathedral had them hand-painted. Here they are in mosaic form. And this is the Last Supper, and we can see Judas does not have a halo, but he is holding a bag. Those are the 30 pieces of silver that he received to betray Jesus to the authorities. Keep moving on, past some more mosaics of the Stations of the Cross. We have a stained glass window 
portraying the resurrection of Jesus. So the Roman soldiers are freaking out because, oh, it's not a superstition. It's real. Christ is real. And we can see here, part of the COVID restrictions, certain pews were roped off to encourage social distancing. Now, only the left side really does that, and the right side is all of the pews are open now. And around these columns, this particular footage was recorded on the week of Pentecost. And so we have red for the Holy Spirit coming down to the Jesus' disciples. I just had a shot of the nice organ. The English masses at St. Boniface typically have organ music. And over here, kind of on the right-hand side, near the statue that you can see in the distance, is the band for the Spanish Mass. The Spanish Mass typically has a band, and that's also tied with the youth ministry. Over on the left side, we have a stained glass window of Jesus learning carpentry and growing in wisdom. And we have... This is a very interesting stained glass window of the presentation at the temple, where Zachariah says... I've seen my Lord, so I can die happy now. And this is where they bring Jesus into the temple. Jesus is now a child growing up in the faith, and he is a servant of the Lord. And we move on here to see Christmas! That's right, this stained glass window depicts everyone's favorite time of year, Christmas, the nativity story. And these stained glass windows were imported from Germany, so you may have noticed, huh, this maybe doesn't look ancient Israel so much as straight-up medieval castle. And that's just how it was in the early 20th century Germany when they made religious art. It had to look great. This is the Annunciation. That is St. Gabriel telling Mary, you are going to bear the Son of God. The savior of the world will come from your womb. So, and again, this is kind of a medieval castle here. So, moving on to the front of the altar and kind of to the right, we have St. Joseph there. St. Joseph being Jesus' earthly father and the most chaste spouse of the Virgin Mary. Catholic tradition states Mary it was always a virgin. Certain Christian sects, uh, I believe they don't, but in Catholicism, uh, Mary um, is perpetually virgin. This is a statue of St. Rita, the one of the patronesses of lost causes. So intercession of St. Rita is for a lost or hopeless cause. Here we have the flag of the Vatican Sea. So... The Holy See, the Vatican City, we have that flag. This stained glass window shows the story of the Bible with Martha and Mary. Martha's busy doing all sorts of chores while Mary's just kind of hanging out with Jesus. And Martha was really kind of, look what I'm doing, look what I'm doing. But she's not realizing why she's doing it. Behind the... On the right-hand side, I should say, of the stained glass window with Martha, we have that stained glass window showcasing Mary Magdalene uh, washing Jesus' feet. And this is uh, that one entrance I showed you kind of by the confessional a little earlier on in the video. And this is, of course, the confessional. I don't think they use this one all that much. I really think they only use one confessional, and I think... With some of the COVID restrictions, you had to call ahead, but they are lifting uh, the COVID restrictions gradually here. I don't know who this saint is. My guess is St. Catherine of Siena, but I cannot swear to that. She is a, Catherine of Siena is a saint that is closely associated with flowers, so I think that's a fair guess, but honestly, I can't tell you and I can't tell you about those relics so I apologize there and uh, on the ramp kind of by where the band gets ready in the St. Joseph altar we have the cry room which is maybe not as interesting as I'm making it sound it's where you go when your kids are 
acting up and they need a little break and they also have some restrooms. And over here we have a statue of Jesus uh, prominently displaying the Sacred Heart, uh, the Sacred Heart of Christ. We have the Easter candle. Easter is officially over. Boy, it took me forever to do this video. And we also have the sanctuary lamp that I mentioned in the cathedral vlog that indicates the body of Christ is present in the tabernacle that you can see just at the foot of the cross. And it's so interesting because sometimes they usually have a screen pulled down in front of the cross, so you can't really look at this cross. And it's a very beautiful piece, so... Um, yeah, I don't know why they usually have it pulled, blocked with a screen. I love that cross. And here we have, this is a very common feature in a lot of Roman basilicas. The sort of circular window at the top. This one shows the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. The Holy Spirit is usually depicted as a dove. So that's what they went for with that particular window. And overall, we can call the St. Boniface Church kind of a Romanesque style, but those are some Art Deco-looking angels there behind the altar. Did you think you were going to see Art Deco modernist angels in this video when you woke up today? No, you didn't. It's very different from some of those old photographs. Uh, the website uh, for the St. Boniface Church has a little bit of uh, photography depicting what used to be in place of those really cool modernist angels. And let me just give a shout out to the serving team of San Carlos. They do a wonderful job. I don't know how they lift and carry all of the instruments for the mass. They do such a good job at such a young age. So I heavily and heartily applaud the San Carlos uh, serving team. The altar boys and altar girls of San Carlos, you do a fabulous job, and you should be very proud of yourselves. And this is uh, the Virgin Mary altar, and I mentioned this with my cathedral vlog. So in Catholic tradition, when you light a candle, it's a way to have your prayers go on throughout the day, and St. Boniface has switched to electric candles, so you just put your coin in the offering box, light a candle, and there you go. And we have a nice statue of the Virgin of Guadalupe, so again, a nice gift from the merger with the San Carlos Parish. Over here we have a statue of St. Anthony holding the Christ child. St. Anthony is typically depicted holding the Christ child. And over here on the right, this leads to the sacristy where they get ready for Mass. We have the American flag on the other end of the church from the Vatican flag. This confessional is um, open for face-to-face -face confessionals, and it's really the only actively used one. And this stained glass window depicts the man himself, St. Boniface. He is seen here chopping down an oak tree that the old German pagans believed the spirits of the gods uh, rested inside of those trees. And those old German pagans understood the language of strength, so St. Boniface comes in and shows that real strength comes from Christ Jesus. And over here we have a statue of the Pieta, but it's not an exact cast like we see at the cathedral. This is, has some variation here. I don't know who did any of the sculptures in the church. A good bet is that it came from the studio of Clements J. Barnhorn, but I cannot go on record and swear to that. I'm just saying it's a good bet. And uh, in the stained glass windows, the imagery we see relates to carpentry. Jesus being raised as a human by St. Joseph. St. Joseph was a carpenter, so uh, Jesus would have been trained in the craft of carpentry. There's a passage in the Bible where the non-believers say, huh, Isn't this the carpenter's son? Why is he talking about salvation here? Well, he's talking about salvation because he is truly the son of God. A true God, true man. That's the essence of Christianity. Here we have some pipes for the pipe organ. And this stained glass window depicts the story of the Good Samaritan. The Samaritan traveler who helped the man who was attacked by robbers. And it's very hard to see, but the scar has... 
an interesting uh, letter. It's kind of the Greek letter P or uh, Pi. Uh, I bet there's some symbolance there. And speaking of symbols, the stained glass windows at the top here, really hard to see because zooming in on a GoPro, I found that out the hard way at a very inopportune time. But we have symbols related to the Christograms, which are ways to depict the name of Jesus. You have I-N-R-I-I-H-S, just the letter X. Uh, you have symbols of grapes. Uh, Jesus wants us to be good, uh, to bear good fruit on the vine. And we have... It's interesting that we have a stained glass window depicting a swan. Swans are sometimes connected to the Virgin Mary, but in the book of Deuteronomy, they are actually listed as an unclean bird, so that's kind of interesting there. But overall, that's the inside of the church. Indeed, our faith community has gone through a very difficult time with the pandemic and with all of the uncertainty and the restrictions and life just not being normal. But what we are doing in this scene here, we are processing as a strong and a renewed faith community. The public health crisis is improving. More people are getting vaccinated. People have been doing a good job social distancing and staying safe. So the virus is on the decline. We have clung to our faith in Jesus, and the virus and the pandemic and the darkness is getting ready to recede. God always has the final word. No matter what it is in your life, whether it's abuse or the pandemic or any health or finance issues, you're not alone. God is most assuredly fighting for you. And we are processing into the church as a renewed and a strengthened community. We are processing at the helm. We have images of the Virgin of Guadalupe, St. Boniface, and San Carlos Borromeo. We are a renewed parish community, and we are marching along in procession, uh, that's uh, my dad up there. You guys all know dad, right? Um, we're maybe not the best at processing, and I'm certainly not the best at processing while managing a GoPro, but remember that you are loved. And I said this the last time, that not everybody who watches my church tours probably share my faith outlook, but even if you don't follow my faith outlook, you are loved, and you do matter. And no matter what the darkness may bring, you're going to get over it. It's going to get better. This is not the end. We're going to conquer. We're conquering COVID-19. And you're going to conquer any of the issues. And we all have issues. We've all got problems and difficulties. And you are going to get through them. Thank you guys so much for watching this and for taking a little tour with me of where I like to spend every Saturday night in prayer with a wonderful community. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. You guys know you're the best fans of any YouTuber in the world. May God bless and keep you, and may you know peace, joy, blessings, and happiness. See you guys later.